And here lies the crust of the work for the Krigler team. The commission is mandated to investigate all aspects of last year's presidential elections and make recommendations to improve the electoral process even as the electoral commission prepares to carry out the by-elections. Oh, and even for this by particular by-election, the commission has decided that it is not going to use any black books and the political parties have been informed that uh, there is a danger of using those black books. The commission resumes its sitting tomorrow morning. Mwendo Kyogora, KTN Prime. Kenya Airways Chief Executive Officer Titus Naikuni has refuted media reports that the national carrier safety record is under scrutiny by the International Air Transport Association. Naikuni says the airline maintains high safety standards. The Kenya Airways CEO also said airfares are set to go up owing to the rising cost of fuel. Recent media reports indicated that Kenya Airways, the country's national carrier, was on the route owing to failure in its safety management. An incident in Entebbe, Uganda last month was quoted as among 135 incidents that took place in the last three months denting KQ's safety record. The incidents recorded in an incident report are said to have been forwarded to IATA and a KQ was summoned allegedly over a poor safety record, allegations which KQ CEO Titus Naikuni has dismissed. We had a press conference which was attended by Mr. Hasim Pondo, who is the regional uh, IATA manager for this region. And it's very, very clear that uh, he has no issue with us, nor has he ever spoken to us on safety. We have a hugely high standard. If you look at the issues of our EISA approval, you will find that a huge amount of European airlines, American airlines, cannot comply with that standard yet. Uh, what the incidents are, are, they are varied. You could have a situation where a passenger has gone into, um, you know, he's fallen sick in the aeroplane, that was an incident. You may have a situation where a motor vehicle has, has, has had an accident, a motor vehicle that carries our own um, stuff, that is an incident. Naikuni, however, admitted that 40% of the incidents in the report are flight related. Meanwhile, the company yesterday commemorated a year passing since KQ Flight 507 crashed in Douala, Cameroon, killing all 114 people on board. Naikuni says compensation for the families was on track. The families, in fact, the first. Um, in two months, who came in and said, look, we want our compensation, we didn't want to go through lawyers or whatever, and we paid. The national carrier, however, says that a steep rise in fuel prices will translate into a rise in airfares to cushion the airline against high operational costs. It's a added cost, a major cost. If you look at our fuel bill, um, this year is going to hit about 27 billion shillings. KQ, which has resumed flights to a number of the routes that were halted during the post-election crisis and plans to expand its fleet within the year. Currently, the airline has 23 planes in its fleet. The past few months have seen Kenyan citizens worried about the safety conditions of the area, concerns which could affect the bottom line of Kenya Airways when their annual results are announced next year. But these are concerns that the Kenya Airways management says Kenyans needn't worry about if only because they spend an average of 200 million US dollars on safety and maintenance alone every year. John Alanam, KTN, and the KQ headquarters in Embakasi. A quick reminder now of the big question tonight. We're asking you, do you have faith in the two parliamentary watchdog committees, that is, the Public Investment Committee and the Public Accounts Committee? Well, you can SMS your yes or no answer using the simple number on the screen. Of course, we announce the poll results and sample some of your views right at the end of this newscast, so do stay tuned. A reminder that you are watching KTN Prime just ahead. A tale of death and destruction. Burma Cyclone claims 22,000 lives. News Bites, brought to you by Fresh Cry.
Welcome back. Prime Minister Raila Odinga is back in the country following laser surgery on his left eye in Germany. The Prime Minister has been recuperating in South Africa. Speaking at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport upon arrival last night, the Prime Minister said he held meetings with Zimbabwean presidential candidate Morgan Tsvangirai in South Africa and urged him to take part in the upcoming runoff. Raila castigated African leaders for maintaining a studious silence over the political crisis in Zimbabwe. Prime Minister arrived at the JKIA at around 10.30 p.m. last evening accompanied by his family. Raila was met at the airport by ODM ministers and officials. The Prime Minister who had gone for minor surgery at the Ulm University Hospital spoke of the operation. On my left eye, to be specific, actually, I had an operation done, a minor operation, and it was very successful. It is still in the process of recovering. And for the next few days, Raila will be spotting a new look in these goggles. As of all, you can see that the huge this side and this side to basically prevent the wind from blowing. But it's a temporary thing that um, the doctors say I need to wear for the next one week and then. I'll do without them. On his way back from the trip, Raila met with former South African President Nelson Mandela and his wife, Bratha Machel. We today had uh, a luncheon with uh, Madiba and his uh, wife, Gasha Machel. Raila also met Morgan Changirai and advised him to participate in the anticipated presidential runoff. I have advised him that it would be right to participate in the rerun of the elections and they said they are, they are going to decide they have not yet quite decided whether they will, do, will participate Raila meanwhile castigated the African Union and African leaders for burying their heads in the sand while injustice continues in Zimbabwe Bonio Dinka, KTN Prime in other news today, the Standard Group Managing Director Paul Wanyaga has asked the public to support the Kenya Society for the Mentally Handicapped Charity Walk to take place next month. The walk aims to raise money and create awareness on mental disability. Wanyaga was speaking at the Standard Group offices where he was joined by the retired Archbishop Ndingi Mwana Anzeki as well as other stakeholders in the venture. The retired Archbishop urged the public, especially the youth, to support the worthy cause Dingi also appealed to those with mentally handicapped children not to hide or neglect them. The walk will be held on the 15th of June here in Nairobi. And I would like to make a special appeal to the people, all of us, to change our mentality and our mind and to remember these children are our children. They are in this world. Why do they come to this world with such abilities? Nobody can explain. These are my...